Going for 16, incumbent 3rd District Congressman Democrat Leonard Boswell seeking an eighth term in the U.S. House of Representatives. State Senator Brad Zahn wants to begin a Republican hold on the congressional seat. We're questioning Boswell and Zahn on this edition of Iowa Press. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, the Iowa Bankers Association for personal business and commercial needs. Iowa banks help Iowans reach their financial goals. For decades, Iowa Press has brought you policymakers and newsmakers from across Iowa and beyond. Now celebrating 40 years of broadcast excellence on statewide Iowa Public Television, this is the Friday, October 15th edition of Iowa Press. This election in Iowa's 3rd Congressional District is getting national attention. The district includes 12 counties, extending from Des Moines in central Iowa, eastward and southeastward, to Marshalltown, Tama, Grundy Center, Vinton, Marengo, Grinnell, Newton, Oskaloosa, and Pella, to say a few. The Republican and Democratic candidates are both from Polk County. Republican Brad Zahn, former mayor of Urbandale, now a state senator. The incumbent is Democrat Leonard Boswell. He's a former state senator, now completing 14 years in the U.S. House of Representatives and wants to go back for an eighth term. Gentlemen, welcome to Iowa Press. Thank you very much. And across the table, Associated Press senior political writer Mike Glover and Radio Iowa News Director Kay Henderson. And like so many other campaigns in this election cycle, attack ads are flying freely. We're going to show you some in this campaign. First, a couple of questioning Congressman Boswell's record. I'm Brad Zahn, and I approve this message. There are strong signs that the economy is becoming, beginning to recover. This is Leonard Boswell's recovery. Unemployment is up. Home foreclosures are up. Job losses are up. And our faith in the federal government is down. If Leonard Boswell thinks we're in a recovery, it's clear he just doesn't understand. Leonard Boswell says the country is headed on the right path. Try telling that to the 114,000 Iowans that are out of work. Boswell voted for billions in failed stimulus spending, Wall Street bailouts, and then voted to gut Medicare for Iowa seniors. This might be the right path for Congressman Boswell and his Washington friends, but Iowa families are the ones who pay the price for his votes. Mike Glover. Congressman Boswell. It's a pretty tough ad against you. The economy is down. How do you respond? Well, I don't know. Might want to read the editorial in USA Today today. It says mm -hmm. that it's actually working. Now, there's lots yet to do. We all know that. But uh, where we would have gone if we hadn't have done some of the things that we've done, uh, I didn't want to go there. So things are bad, but they could have been worse. Oh, it could have been much worse. You said you didn't want to go there. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I, uh, when the uh, situation happened on Wall Street, for example, and Secretary Paulson from the Bush administration came to us wanting $700 billion now with no uh, oversight, no nothing, I said, no. My first re gut reaction, I need to finish this, this point. There's a point here. And the point is that, uh, you know, the, the rascals did it, just let them suffer. Then I remembered, and I went down, I walked through that FDR memorial and thought about it a little bit. And I thought about the things my father, my grandfather, different ones said. And I said, you know, if we're at that precipice about to go over, which she said we were, I don't want to go there without putting up a fight and trying. So right. that's what we've done. We'll go simply guess now. A couple of other commercials currently running are attacking the opposite candidate. Let's take a look. I'm Leonard Boswell, and I approve this message. What did Brad Zahn say about protecting 29,000 biofuel jobs? A farmer said to me, what are you going to do for me and the biofuels industry? And I said, nothing. Zahn said he'd do nothing. Nothing. When the floodwaters rose, Iowans came together. And when they receded, we worked hard to rebuild. But on flood emergencies, Zahn said Iowans forgot personal responsibility. Zahn would have denied over 4,000 Iowans emergency flood assistance. What has been forgotten is personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. Iowans needed a hand. Brad Zahn gave us a lecture. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Okay. Mr. Zahn, what's your rebuttal to those ads? Well, I'll tell you, on all these ads, which I think is very unfortunate, have been taken out of context. In regards to the ethanol, 
uh, what I was communicating is the mandates that I will not uh, support. And those are the two mandates that tell you what kind of fuel mix you have to buy at the pump. And secondly, uh, how Detroit has to build their cars. Uh, boss, well, I see you shaking your head. Well, mandates, uh, it wasn't taken out of context. He said, it. We, if you want to see the whole thing, well, we can show it to you. It wasn't taken out of context at all. The okay. question that you were answering in that Tea Party debate was about farm subsidies. Right. And you brought up biofuels. Right. And, and I was communicating that I'm not going to support. I'm going to do nothing for the mandates that the biofuels industry wants. At the state fair, you said you do support the ethanol tax break, but you said you didn't yet know whether you supported the tax break for biodiesel well, in August. Well, you know, at the, in regards to the biofuels and, and the soy mix is that um, I think that that industry needs to grow. What I really have a problem with is the $100,000 to $600,000 per new job that was spent by the taxpayers of Iowa for a new job that was created. And I think every industry needs to stand on its own two feet. Now, I recognize that the ethanol industry is very important with a lot of benefits to uh, the state of Iowa. And uh, certainly, we're less dependent on foreign oils. And I think that's great. And I will do whatever I can. I will, if I'm elected to the United States Congressman, support that 45 cent blender fee tax credit that they have. And uh, I think we need to have a long range energy plan. And that's missing in the United States. And I think that ethanol needs to be part of that plan. Congressman Boswell, the core argument against you is you're a seven-term member of a Congress that polls tell us voters just don't like. And you stand next to Nancy Pelosi, who polls tell us voters just don't like. How do you deal with that? You know, when you've got the situation where the majority, you've got to lead, it's kind of like uh, going off and leading the troops. Sometimes you've got to make hard decisions. And I've been wanting to do some of these hard decisions for some time. So if people want to talk about Pelosi, well, go to California and run against Pelosi. But uh, the, you know, the fact is that uh, she agrees with me on some of the things we need to get involved in, the economy, alternative energy, which we're just talking about a little bit. And we could certainly talk a lot more because I've been involved in this for years. And it's very important to get out of bondage to OPEC and the farmers of America can do a lot of that. We need to talk about health care. We didn't just learn that health care was coming up the last 12 months. So we've known it for years. We went through eight years of doing nothing, just kicking the can down the road. And so we finally come to a point where we're going to take these things on. And I was ready to do it. I, there's risk involved, but you got to do what you got to do. And you got the leadership responsibility. And so I was willing to get into that. And uh, whoever the speaker was, it didn't matter to me. I walked, uh, worked across the aisle for years. A record is there. I wanted to tackle those issues, and we did, and we did pretty good in the House of Representatives. The Mr. Senate didn't do quite so good. Mr. Zahn, is there anything to your campaign other than you're not a member of Congress, you're not part of this Congress that polls tells that voters don't like? What do you bring to the table other than I'm not in that Congress? Well, real life experience, common sense. I was mayor for uh, Urbandale for seven years, and what we did is we drove down the tax rate. Uh, we cut a lot of red tape, owning a hardware store. I mean, I've signed the front side of a paycheck, and I've had struggles like a lot of people have had in the third congressional district. I mean, I'm being accused of not being personally responsible in some of these attack ads. And the fact of the matter is, is I am personally responsible. You know, I have done what I was raised to do, and that's be responsible for the debts that you have. And so many people are going through tough times right now. I paid all my debts back, and I think it's unfortunate uh, the way this campaign's went. I, I, Mr. Boswell, <clears throat> Mr. Zahn accuses you of voting 98% of the time along with Nancy Pelosi. I'm going back to Mike's question okay, here sure. on Nancy Pelosi. Is that she represents a portion of San Francisco? Are you saying there that the the views of the people that she represent closely are aligned with those of people in the third district? You know, uh, Dean, I'm a blue dog, a moderate Democrat. You know that. I, you all know that. And uh, when she became speaker, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but uh, somebody said she wouldn't be supportive of Pago. And my response to our group was, well, you don't know that. Let's just ask her. Who knows? So we did. She came. And she came over and we put the question to her and we explained why we thought it, you know, it was working in the Clinton administration, the Bush administration threw it out and didn't continue it. The Wall Street debacle took place, another other, th other things took place. So we said, you know, would you support this? And she said, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, I would support that. And she has. 
So, you know, there's just a lot of effort to politicize something that's really not necessary. we got important things we need to be doing. What you're saying is give and take. She gives to you, you take. Well, uh, we, you know, we work together to, 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 to tackle the things that needed to be done that have been kicked down the road, and it's time to Ms. take it on. Okay. Mr. Zahn, in the ad that the viewers saw at the beginning of the program, bailouts were mentioned. Mm -hmm. Is there an instance in which you think the government should be involved in bailing out the auto industry or some other part of the economy? Are you blanket opposed to all government bailouts. Well, every business has to stand on its own two feet. We cannot afford to continue the spending that we're doing, which is partially, you know, the stimulus, which is rewarding bad behavior uh, the, in regards to the companies that are out there and the schemes that have done on Wall Street. We can no longer afford as a country. We're bankrupt. And I would not support, you know, going out there and bailing out businesses. I think this is a market-driven economy that we have. And I think that, you know, in, in the uh, example of General Motors, I know that there would have been some investors that would have came in and acquired General Motors for the name, the Corvette name, just to be able to, and it would have been back on its feet, and I think that would have been the proper way to do it. Early in the program, you addressed bailouts. Let's address the auto bailout specifically. Did the government err in, in getting involved in the auto industry to the extent that it did? Well, we didn't just give them cash and say, here, you know, hope things get better. You know, their shares were bought, and they, they took some interest in that. And can you imagine what the unemployment rate would have been if we hadn't have done that? What it would have done to our country with all that extra thousands of thousands of unemployment? Auto industry, steel mills, the uh, ore mills, and so on. <laughs> Uh, it would have been devastating, and they're paying it back. And I think, as it says today in the editorial and, and other reports coming in, it looks like there's a possibility that taxpayers will gain on this because they got shares, they're selling them off. The government doesn't want to own them, so we didn't want to just hand them cash. Mr. Boswell, let's go to some of the core arguments that are used against you in this campaign. One of the core arguments used against you is you're simply too old, you've been around too long, uh, you were in the retired from the Army, you were in the legislature for a long time, you've now been in Congress for 14 years. How do you respond to that? Well, don't discriminate us against us because we're lucky enough to get well, a few years. Well, I've got years. some gray hair, too. Well, so. I've noticed that, <laughs> yes. But anyway, I, you know, there's an experience factor. You know, I want to talk about running a small business. I don't think that Mr. Zahn thinks that running a farm is a small business. It takes a lot to do, besides the risk of uh, the things, the investments, you got to deal with weather and uh, pesticides and all kinds of things. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a very much a small business. And, and I went through the farm crisis. I've still got it. It's still working, and I'm very proud of it. And I like to take people and show them how I'm a good conservationist and the things that we do. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that I bring a lot of experience to the table. I've been to war. I know what it's like to send our men and women off to war. Mr. Zahn? Mr. Zahn? Is that you who, who is alleging that he's too old to be in Congress? Absolutely not. I'm glad you brought that up because I would never, ever talk about that. I think what you've done, and I'll tell you, Leonard, I salute your service to our country. I think that being in business and agriculture is a great business to be in. And it's no different than the hardware store I had. And, uh, well, then I would say you not make this make the implication that you're the only one who's been in business when I certainly have to. Well, I certainly am not trying to imply that. I'm certainly implying that I have business experience, and I'm trying to sell myself to the voters. Mr. Zahn, the core argument against you is you are a knee-jerk conservative, you, oppose, you want to privatize Social Security, and you don't care much about the rights of workers. How do you respond well, to those first arguments? first of all, uh, you know, I'm not a... I, I've, I've broke party ranks. Uh, I don't have a... You know, I know Congressman Boswell talks about being a blue dog Democrat. 98% is not a blue dog Democrat. You know, in regards to how I operate, I always try to figure out what is best for the people I represent. I did that as a mayor. I did, I've done it in the state Senate. I've told the Republicans when they're wrong, and I've acted that way and voted appropriately. Give me a couple of examples. Well, I would tell you that the car title loans. I mean, there was a lot of pressure on me from the Republicans in regards to uh, shutting down the car title companies in the state of Iowa. I broke ranks there. And uh, I will continue to do what I think is right. And I will do what I think that the people that sent me in Washington, D.C., or sent me to the Capitol in, in Des Moines, uh, what they think is best. And, and certainly, I will listen to all of them. Uh, 
does match up from what he's saying about bringing people in to talk to them, want to take a page out of the playbook that put us in the ditch and go back to those same policies. I don't make a lot, I, I can't connect that. Well, one what of the things saying. that you're saying about him is that he hasn't managed his personal finances uh, well. You stand by that? <clears throat> well, uh, here's the thing. You think it's fair? Well, let, let me respond to that, Dean. I appreciate that question. You're going to go out and, and preach personal responsibility. Say, this is what you got to do. Well, you ought to be practicing it, but you ought to be kind of sympathetic. You ought to be, you know, realize that you get in those situations, and sometimes you got to go to the, like going to the neighbors. So when we were raised on the farm down there, when something went wrong with the neighbors, we stopped what we were doing. We went to help. And so it's okay to ask for some help and give somebody a, a little lift up. And particularly if you've been and been through some of it. So I, I don't understand where your sympathy is or your understanding because it's not connecting. It's it looks on. like a disconnection to me. Well, personal responsibility is this. I've been through tough times. I've talked about this in the, when I made my announcement. Uh, you know, there was a time when 2001 came along and I owned that hardware store and Home Depot and Lowe's came in. And then 9-11 hit and I had to make some adjustments. My business went down. I had to pay my employees before myself. But what I did is what my parents taught me. And personal responsibility is taking care of the bills that you have. And I did that. I've, str I'm, I've struggled like so many people in the 3rd Congressional District. There's 114,000 Iowans that are unemployed right now. Talking about struggling, uh, oh, Leonard yeah. Boswell, you have a farm background as well as a political background. That's true. Uh, Tom Vilsack, federal uh, U.S. Agriculture Secretary, said this week that it defended farm subsidies, uh, even though crop prices are high right now, because he says we as consumers benefit from inexpensive, relatively inexpensive food. Do you think that farm subsidies can be defended as being relevant in this contemporary price mm -hmm. society? Well, there, something needs to be connected together. You know, people who live downtown New York or downtown Des Moines or L.A. or wherever, we all have a vested interest in having a successful uh, food production and processing and so on. We do have the most available, safest, uh, least expensive food in the world because we all invest in it through the farm bill. However, getting to your point there about the uh, direct payments and so on, that's one of the reasons we've started the hearings way in advance across the country, which I encouraged our chairman to do, and I chair a very important subcommittee that has a lot to do with farmers when it comes to commodity futures, risk management, and so on. We're going to have to do some drawback, it seems to us, in that our prediction. So let us get out there to the, the producers and the processors and say, if we do this, what do you need the most? And they need that safety net. And we've got to be sure that it's accessible, it's available, and it's affordable. And that's where I'm putting my Mr. concentration. Mr. Zahn, yes. on, on uh, farm subsidies. Well, I'll tell you what. What I see, I definitely think we need to go through the process and seeing uh, if it's a benefit to the taxpayers mm -hmm. of the state of Iowa. You know, I see, and of course the Farm Bureau surprised me with uh, their coming out and saying that they're really close to saying no, stop the farm subsidies. But the fact is, is I see a lot of big, large corporations, uh, corporate farms getting this money, so I think it's something that we need to look at. Kay, you had a follow-up. Um, back to the beginning of the program and biodiesel, could you tell us whether you support the tax break for biodiesel, uh, which is I'm, also a farm Well, it's issue. expired here a year ago, and, and certainly uh, I think that the biodiesel industry needs to grow, and at this point I would not support that. And to put a finer point on farm subsidies, if you're elected, would you vote to get rid of them? I would. I think we need to go through the process and look through you know, what the, the benefit is to the taxpayers. We're all interested in lower cost of food. Uh, but I think when there's individuals or corporations getting more of the money than individual family farms, I think that it's something that needs to be addressed. You're shaking your head no. Well, the very statement about, talk about, concerned about the 114,000, what about those 80,000 people out there in the alternative fuel, ethanol and biodiesel and so on, and the efforts we're making to get us out of bondage to OPEC? I mean, you're, you're not connecting, Brad. No. You're, you're just not connecting. I, and that's that's part, part of my problem. You know, there's a real situation out there that we've got to do better, and we have led out in Iowa, and I've been involved in it for years, and it's a stand-up business that we've got to continue to support and be sure that we can make it solid, and we definitely should be supporting those biodiesel plants that are sitting out there idle because that is something we'll get so many different sources of food stock that we can use to put into biodiesel and not be coming in from OPEC 
they take it there, they spend it in tariffs against us, and we can do better. And so you're saying just, no, we don't want to do that. I, I, just, I, I find that very hard to believe. Very like hard to, to believe. I respectfully disagree. You know, when we as taxpayers invest a hundred to $600,000 for each new job created, that's excessive. And I want that industry to survive, and I want it to flourish. You want it to survive, you just don't want to do anything. My goodness. We can't afford it anymore. Well, we can't afford not to. Mr. Zahn, you earlier said that you would not have supported some of the spending that was done under the stimulus program, the auto industry in specifics. What would you have done? Nothing? I, I, the stimulus spending that was out there was rewarding states and uh, schools and counties for bad behavior. We cannot afford that anymore. So what would you have done? Nothing? I would have done nothing. I would have let the economy that take care of itself is what I would have done. We cannot afford the $14 trillion debt that we're handing on to our next generation. We've got to make tough changes in Washington, D.C. And uh, I think every business should stand on its own two feet. I think all the states should stand on their own two feet. Mr. Basel, what would have been the consequences of doing nothing? We went over the cliff. Please, if you want to know what would have happened, go in and walk through the FDR memorial. It would have been severe. Uh, a good case in point, when we had that first, uh, the, the, the recovery thing come up, the, the tarp came up, and uh, you know, and I said, you know, let them fail, then I walked the floor two nights, went down and went back through that, and I said, we can't go there. I, if we're going to go down, I want to go down fighting. And so I went back to the caucus and I said to them, you know, it's, it's risk. But we've got to do something. We've got to put some oversight on it. We've got to put, you know, Paulson can't just have this, the Bush administration, but we've got to do something. So we did. We had a vote on it and failed. You might remember that. Like we came back on break, and uh, so uh, staff met me at the airport and said, well, what's going to happen? And then I said, well, I think we'll be called back. Three days later, we were. I was at the airport getting my boarding pass, and the person behind the counter said, uh, may I talk to you? And I said, well, if I don't miss the flight, yes. <laughs> and uh, she, the individual said, I was very angry at you last week. And I said, well, I'm sorry. And so she said, but I got to thinking about this. And, and I, I'm investing into my future, my retirement plan, and so on. And that money's not in a sock or a mattress somewhere. It's invested. If we went south, if we went into a depression, I would lose Mr. that. Osborne, and just I said, like yes, you were yes miss, you would. Just like you were going to miss that flight. We're running out of time oh, here, Kate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, but Zahn, anyway, she apologized for being angry at me. Sorry, sir. Mr. Zahn, let's talk about health care. Would you repeal the entire plan, or would you keep components of it in place? Yeah, I want to address one thing that was said earlier in regards to uh, privatization of Social Security. That is absolutely not true. I, we've got to fix Social Security. There's too many Iowans that depend on that. Uh, and your question again was? In regards to health care, would you yeah. repeal the entire package or would you keep components of it in place? I, you know what? There, I would repeal uh, the health care that was passed. Number one, we can't afford it. And number two, it's taken $500 billion out of Medicare, which is going to be very problematic. Um, we need to make some changes in the health care bill. And we, I've co-sponsored some legislation in the Iowa Senate in regards to buying across, uh, you know, uh, state, state lines. The other thing is we have got to, we can't afford this. We cannot afford this. But I do believe we need can't to repeal. afford the whole package. We cannot afford the whole package. Mr. Boswell, we some can't. of your colleagues in Congress are running ads bragging about their vote on health care reform. You are not among them. Why not? Well, I'm, I'm certainly not running from it at all. You know, I'm trying to define who. I think this person is that I don't think people really understand, but I think that uh, we couldn't afford not to do something. Healthcare costs going up over here, what was 18% last year, and that means that that was the average. Of some was much more than that. Uh, when Still we going up, though, Mr. Boswell. Well, well, there's a transition period here, and again, if the, the nonpartisan CBO, which has no hunt for either Republican or Democrat, have said that we're going to save 130 some billion the first year, in this, or the first 10 years, and the second 10 years, over a trillion. So there's going to be a savings there, but it takes some time to get it implemented and get it into place. And, but to say you're going to turn it back, I mean, you're going to say those people with pre-existing conditions, sorry, that's too bad, or the women out there that are being discriminated against that have to pay more just because they're a woman, sorry, that's okay. Uh, that, that they're going to let the donut hole continue to, con uh, to go on, sorry, Just, just that's a quick okay. response, Mr. Turn Zahn. On. Well, you know what, we are promised uh, that we were going to be able to keep our own health care. 
if you look and see what just happened here, there was 21,000 Iowans are told they can't be a part of Medicare Advantage. There's 1,500 people in the Des Moines area that lost their job because of this health care thing and six other companies. And we are made promises. We need to make changes, and I will support, and I'll be a very advocate to make changes to improve our health care system. Mr. Boswell, we've only got about a minute left. I'd like to use that and like you divide the time up weekly. You said something interesting earlier. You said that there's things that people don't understand about Mr. Zahn. What don't people understand about him? Well, the rhetoric doesn't fit, doesn't fit what he's done. You know, that's, that's part of it. But back to health care advantage, people don't understand. The Medicare advantage is still Medicare. And because the, the cost of having somebody outside to manage this, kind of like the uh, uh, higher education situation where we've got a major fix in, people that go off Medicare advantage are still in Medicare. They're still in Medicare. They're not going to lose their Medicare, but they're going to be 500 billion saved, and it will extend Medicare out for 12 years. You still have Medicare. It's still there, and then you don't have this advantage of somebody orchestrating it because uh, they, they could, there's an opportunity to pool and make money there, mm -hmm. and taken away from the larger pool, which most Iowans are involved Mr. in. Mr. Zahn, the same question to you. You've had a long, hard, tough campaign. A lot of charges have, have flown. You have an opportunity here to tell people what they should know about Mr. Boswell that they don't know. What's well, you that? know what? I'm going to continue to run a campaign talking about issues. I challenge you, Congressman Boswell, to come up with one ad where it talks about solutions or anything about my voting record. The fact of the matter is, is, is I think that it is unfortunate that you're making personal attacks. That's all this campaign's been out, and that's all that's come out of your campaign. I'm going to listen to people, and I'm going to continue serving the way I've served. And uh, I just ask everybody to, to ask them one question when they go into the voter booth, and that is, do you think the country is headed on the right direction? Because Congressman Boswell thinks we're headed on the right path. I have to interrupt because we're out of time. Thanks so much for being with us today. Two program reminders before we go, beginning Monday and continuing through Saturday this coming week. Iowa Public Television presenting six pre-election programs interviewing candidates in November 2nd's general election. Public Television's Paul Yeager hosting Iowa Candidates 2010, airing at 6.30 every night this week, Monday through Saturday. You'll see and hear candidates seeking federal offices, both the U.S. House and Senate, as well as those seeking statewide elected offices. And then on Thursday of this coming week, another program, third and final gubernatorial debate, incumbent Governor Chet Culver, challenger Terry Branstead in a forum sponsored by Iowa Public Television and the Des Moines Register. You'll see the debate live at noon on Iowa Public Television's World Point three channels statewide rebroadcast at 8 Thursday night on our main channel statewide. I hope you'll watch these special programs to help us all be better informed voters. I'm Dean Borg. Thanks for joining us today. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, the Iowa Bankers Association, for personal, business, and commercial needs, Iowa banks help Iowans reach their financial goals.